He was just a kid. A kid, according to his neighbors, that always had a friendly smile on his face. It seemed for a while that fate had dealt him a bad hand. A tumor on the brain. Not something to be taken lightly. But as things turned out, that tumor was benign. It was removed by first-class surgeons in New York, and that was that. The boy was back on track and good to go. But as medical protocol demands, he had to return to the hospital for a scan, just a routine imaging procedure, to check if all was well inside his skull. He laid down on the MRI machine platform and with the push of a button, was delivered into the tube. In a flash of an eye, a super powerful magnetic field sent a metal oxygen tank flying across the room. The patient's skull was crushed. It was a bad way to die. Now, you're probably wondering how that happened. We wouldn't blame you for thinking that the scene we just described is a work of fiction, but we regret to tell you that it isn't. It happened just like that. The boy, aged six, died soon after from his injuries. He was a healthy kid, and since his tumor was benign, he didn't have much to worry about. How could he or his patients have known that freak accidents can happen in an MRI room? We'll get around to telling you why they happen, but first, let's have a look at some more accidents, at times tragic and in some cases downright insane. Imagine this scene. An off-duty walks into a hospital. He's there for an MRI scan, aka a magnetic resonance imaging scan. He might be off-duty, but he's still carrying a weapon. A loaded weapon, too. One of the staff at the hospital tells him it's okay to remain strapped for the scan. Well, that was a mistake. Not just a rookie mistake, but a downright foolish blunder. No sooner than the cop entering the room, his gun flies out of its holster as if in the grips of a malevolent spirit. It zips across the room, sticks to the side of the machine, and before anyone has time to say what the hell, the gun fires. The cop ducks, the staff dive for cover, it's total chaos. When calm is restored, staff try to pry the gun from the machine, but it won't give it up. It takes three hours to pull it off, and it's only possible when the machine powers down and releases its grip. Now for something a little more gruesome. Rajesh Maru, 32, used to live in Mumbai, India, until an MRI machine had its way with him. Maru was just a ward boy, the type of person that carries out errands in a hospital. One day, he's told to take an oxygen cylinder into an MRI room, and that doesn't go down too well for him. No sooner than he enters the room, he's sent hurtling through the air. On contact with the side of the machine, the cylinder leaks, and poor Maru inhaled a steady draft of liquid oxygen. Goodbye, Mr. Maru, that certainly was a worst way to die. A few years earlier, over in New Delhi, something equally as absurd happened. A hospital technician and a ward boy were carrying a metal oxygen tank into an MRI room, and as you can probably guess, that was a big mistake. The machine did its magic and sent the four-foot tank flying across the room, but as both men were standing in front of the tank, they were pinned between it and the machine. The pressure wasn't like being cramped on a third-class Indian train carriage. The guys were literally being squashed for four hours until the machine was powered down. Both men fell unconscious under the extreme pressure. The injuries sustained included a damaged abdomen, a punctured bladder, muscular damage, a fractured elbow, and severe bleeding. We'll come back to the accidents and possibly the most horrific thing you've ever heard in your life, but first, let's look at the science of why MRIs have done some very nasty things to people. Since it's called a magnetic resonance imaging machine, you probably have guessed by now that inside the machine there's a magnet, a very powerful magnet. Magnet strength is measured in Tesla, and the most powerful magnet that's ever been invented had a continuous field of 45.5 Tesla. And that's a lot. Have you ever seen one of those giant magnets used in junkyards to lift cars? They're about one Tesla. Those magnets you have in your fridge, they're usually around 0.005 Tesla. The magnet inside an MRI machine is usually between 1.5 and 3 Tesla. Although, the Inumac magnet inside the $250 million Super MRI machine has a power of over 12 Tesla. As one person put, enough power to lift a tank like Magneto. While most MRI machines will be 3 Tesla or less, that's enough to pull guns out of holsters and send canister-carrying hospital staff flying through the air. We don't want to scare you guys from ever getting an MRI scan. Accidents are rare, and when you consider that from 1982 there have been millions and millions of scans inside the US alone, your chances of becoming canned meat inside a machine, well, you have more chance of choking on a jackpot-winning lottery ticket. MRIs are great. They give specialists detailed images of your brain and other organs. The thing is, though, you can't take any risks with them. Those veritable X-Men have incredible powers. They can kill, maim, squash heads, and as you'll see, torture. The magnets are usually on all the time, so it's not as if people walk into MRI rooms thinking the machine might be sleeping. They should know that it never sleeps and will only do so if a big red shut-off button is pushed. This only ever happens in an emergency, such as when two lean Indian dudes are having their internal organs violently massaged. Even when the magnetic field is turned off, it takes some time to die down. 
Such an emergency quench hardly ever happens because it can damage the magnet and cost a chunk of cash. MRI room protocol demands that no magnetic objects are taken into the room lest they become murderous projectiles. Although as you've seen, things don't always go to plan. That's either because staff are uninformed or they thought they were carrying non-magnetic metal. What you're all thinking now is what about the fillings and teeth? And if you go in for a scan, is there a possibility of them coming out? Maybe even taking an implant and at worst, an implant that's burrowing through your mouth and into your brain? That's a disturbing image, but this has never happened and never will. If crowns contain magnetic material, there's a chance they could come out or at least be dislodged, but we just can't find any data on when this has happened. Ok, so you can stop worrying about your mouth and death by dental implant, but there's more to worry about and we think you need to know about it. This is just awful but as macabre as accidental deaths gets. There was a woman, a woman who had something called an aneurysm clip embedded into her brain. This is a metal clip that holds the base of the aneurysm to prevent blood from getting into it. It's a lifesaver, but in 1992 for a 74 year old woman it was a killer. The magnet pulled the clip and that shift through her brain caused a hemorrhage so you have to be aware of what you have inside your body. Let's say you have a pacemaker, well that thing could malfunction under the magnetic assault and you certainly don't want a machine that keeps you alive getting stressed. When this has happened people have died. It happened to a former English mayor in 2004. She didn't tell the staff she had a pacemaker and when the MRI scan was switched on her device scrambled. The hospital should have known better. Then there was that guy that had metal lodged in his eye and he didn't tell the hospital staff about it. The metal moved and he came out of the MRI blind in that eye. There was that woman whose hairpin went right up her nose and lodged inside her pharynx and there was the man who almost had the worst death ever. He had what's called a brain shunt, something to help remove excess fluid on his brain. He turned down an MRI on one occasion because he was claustrophobic. He was a few minutes away from going into that tube but he backed out and more importantly, he hadn't even told them about his brain shunt. A few months later and he was back in the hospital having come to terms with entering that tunnel. On this occasion he did tell them about his shunt only for a technician to say no MRI for you. He asked why and the reply was the magnet would heat up your shunt and possibly explode your head. This was a bit of an exaggeration but the accidental pressure change from the strong magnetic field could have been lethal. It wouldn't have been a nice way to go. Now you need to watch this, crazy things a doctor removed from inside a person's body. Or have a look at this.